Yippee Friday! Nobody circles the wagons like the Denver Broncos under coach Sean Payton. We get great news on the injury front before facing the Carolina Panthers. We take a look back at some of Sean Payton's previous trade deadlines and use that to predict what might happen at this one. And we get some news about why we have not even seen the ceiling for this pass rush in particular. That and so much more in this video. And at the end, we have an uncrustable update for all y'all. If you're new to this channel, my name is Ben. I'm a diehard Denver Broncos fan. And if you like the Broncos too, it helps me out a ton if you would like and subscribe. But let's dive in. Uh, so the big news of the day that broke after I recorded my video yesterday is obviously... Uh, the horrible situation where our starting wide receiver, Josh Reynolds, was shot twice. And um, it gave me major flashbacks to Darren Williams when I was in middle school and one of the, the worst days of being a Broncos fan when you have a, a player who's actually killed. Um, and all of that aside, like we're not going to get into the shooting or any of that. Um, when you look at it on the field um, and the impact of that, he will be back. They were grazing shots, and he's expected to make a full recovery. Thoughts and prayers with him for sure. Uh, but to me, it's more like the meta story of the fact that I cannot believe that this happened, and it took Denver media six days, almost seven days. It happened at 3 a.m. on Friday, so a week ago today. And it took six days until that story came out. And I just don't think there's another locker room in the entire NFL that keeps things as close as these Denver Broncos do. And I don't think it's out of um, an authoritarian coach or a, like a fascist coach who's like scaring players to stay in line. I think it's truly out of like a, a team culture and chemistry. And like we are so tight as a team that it's like block out all of that outside noise. And I really think it's a great thing. Um, that it's like Sean Payton has this group so locked in and those wagons so tight that the outside noise and leaking stories to the outside press just doesn't happen here. And you look at the love players have for him that after that Saints game, how many former players were there just giving him bear hugs? You saw Kamara, a lip reader, said that Alvin Kamara mouthed to Sean Pay or said to Sean Payton, come get me. Uh, you see Cam Jordan like hugging him for 20 seconds. And I think there's that love that players have for him. And that's why stories like Alex Singleton, our defensive captain, tore his ACL, and we don't find it out for five days um, until Sean Payton wants it to get out. Like, it was the last possible moment that that news could get out. He didn't want the Jets planning for a, a new inside linebacker, and so that story didn't get out until it had to get out when the injury report had to be released. Uh, similarly, like, you remember uh, a player who played every single snap for us or every single game for us last year, a lot of high hopes for him, Drew Sanders. He tore his Achilles tendon, and we didn't find out about that for an entire month. And so to me, Sean Payton has developed this chemistry and has this band of brothers mentality, and I think it's a great thing, and you're seeing the winning on the field match that, and, and I think that's great. And so all of these things, like this tight-knit group and nothing gets out until Sean wants it to get out, really has me thinking about the trade deadline. And, and frankly, I don't think anyone is going to know what Sean Payton is going to do until he does it. And, and I think that is clear by we don't know big stories until they until he has to tell us. And so all of this, uh, you know, predictions and like, oh, Sean's going to go get Cooper Cup. He's going to go to get to get this. We're not going to know what Sean wants to do until he does it. And I actually think that's a really good thing for a winning culture to have. But Mike Close wrote an awesome article here uh, in the Denver Post about or on Nine News about what Sean has done at past trade deadlines and how we can use that to kind of predict what's going to happen. And in general, Sean Payton is an overly confident guy, and I love that about him. He told the Denver media, like, hey, the next time I win seven games is going to be the first time. I keep two middle fingers, and I've learned not to use them at age uh, with my age now when faced with – people saying we were predicted only win five games. So I know Sean believes in this team. And so when you look at his past history, there are a lot of years where you see him make very minuscule moves, if anything. You don't see anything in here like going and getting a DeAndre Hopkins or going and getting a, a, a wide receiver one or a Christian McCaffrey type trade. You see like maybe little minuscule things or moving on from players who aren't actually going to have any playing time. So you see Randy Gregory last year was kind of a trade, but basically we were cutting him and our that was the meteoric rise of our defense was getting rid of that dead weight in our locker room. And it was like from the time he left until the rest of this, uh, the end of that season, we were a top seven defense. And so that's why none of our defensive performance now should be a surprise to us because 
when we had Sean Payton dudes running this team and playing and starting, we were a top seven defense. And and so I could see a world where perhaps he moves on from one of our quarterbacks, but there's such great chemistry in that room. Part of me is like, I don't think he's going to do that. But all of this, looking at his past history and you look at what, five years in a row with the Saints that he did not, not go out and make a single move. You see traded away, traded away. Um, and the few times that he acquired players, none of them were like a Cooper Cup type um, acquisition. And so especially with how Cooper Cup looked last night and the way the Rams beat the Vikings in such a dominant fashion and uh, Stafford looked great. It's like when Puka, Cooper Cup and Stafford are healthy, that's a playoff team. And so I don't think Sean Payton is going to make a move for Cooper Cup. The only move I still think is a possibility is uh, David Njoku, and that might just even be me hoping it more than me actually predicting it. But that's going to be wild. We will keep you updated here, but really no one is going to know until Sean does it, and that's that's amazing um, how he does that. So taking a look here at our, our next six games, very, very excited for what we have in store here, that we have this game against the Panthers this week. I love the fact that... Um, we we have this 10-day mini-buy that we had time to get right. We got Pat Sertan coming back into the lineup, and you're looking at a game that Bo Nix is going to get right. I'm guessing that he is going to throw for multiple touchdowns. You're talking a, a bottom 20 defense in every single statistical category. They're like 30th for points given up and yards given up. So I, I just think this is a perfect matchup. Uh, There are a couple things in there that concern me a little bit. I think Josie Jewell is going to want to come out and like make the Denver Broncos regret moving on from him. But how much difference can one inside linebacker make? The other thing that you could possibly see is that Bryce Young being back in this starting lineup, he just went through every quarterback's worst nightmare. Um, And it's almost like that um, immersion therapy in your fear. Like if you're afraid of heights, the best way to get over it is to like go to the top of the Eiffel Tower and just look down or something. And so it's almost like in the back of his mind, he was afraid of being benched and afraid of being benched. And that maybe stopped him from like going out and just letting him ball out of control. And he maybe was more guarded with decisions or, and now his worst nightmare came true and he lived through it. And now he's back in and you could almost see him playing with like a reckless abandon, like, Hey, the worst thing already happened. Let me go out and play my game and see what happens. I'm not predicting that. I think the Broncos absolutely roll. And then we're going into, um, we're going into Baltimore with the wind at our backs and a ton of confidence after hopefully two dominating performances against the saints and then against the Carolina Panthers. Uh, one of the reasons that I'm so bullish on this continuing and us just getting better and better is just looking at how amazing Zach Allen has been performing. A uh, really, really cool article written this time actually in the Denver Post about Zach Allen and um, John Franklin Myers working with BT Jordan and how much that has fueled their meteoric rise that he's kind of a, a guru, pass, pass rush specialist coach who's really unlocked their potential. But the cool thing is just thinking of what's going to happen to our outside edge rushers now that Zach Allen is the most, has the most pressures against quarterbacks, has the best win rate, all of that. What's going to happen is you're going to see him starting to eat up more and more double teams, leaving Cooper and Benito and Ellis and uh, Baron Browning and then Drew Sanders when he is back, probably by next month, he'll be eligible to come back. Those guys are going to be facing single teams and they're going to win that every single time. And that that's an exciting thing that the better Zach Allen is doing, the better this entire defensive line is going to do because teams have to protect the center of, of that line. And so you're going to see more and more double teams. I remember back to the Super Bowl defense with the Denver Broncos and Von Miller gave so much credit to Derek Wolf because Derek Wolf would require a double team, which would let him just eat on the outside. And that's exactly what we're going to have with these Denver Broncos. Um, so big week coming up, uh, post game Sunday, y'all crushed it. And I said, if there were 500 likes on my last video that I was going to eat 900 or nine, uh, uncrustables, nine and a half, I believe to be exact in the post game breakdown of the Carolina Panthers. And there was like a thousand likes. I think that's like my most liked video ever. So maybe you just want to punish me. So I, um, I'm going to Walmart because we have the Walmart owner. That's where I got to buy it from. And I will be eating nine, um, nine Uncrustables, and I've been doing stomach stretches, and I'm pumped for it. Or 
Actually, I'm dreading it, and I don't know how I'm going to do it, but hopefully you all will be there. Denver Broncos are making the playoffs, and we got a ton to believe in.